wouldn't it be nice to never have to diet again, never have to restrict food, yet still have a weight that you feel amazing at and that you don't have to micromanage? Yeah, I think so too. And in this video, I'm going to tell you how to do just that. Today we're going to talk about the elephant in the room when living a life with no food rules, weight. One of the biggest fears that you guys have when learning to live a life without food rules and getting the hang of this whole intuitive eating thing is what's going to happen to our weight? My past self included had this fear. We think that if we give up our food rules, we're just going to eat all of the things all of the time and never stop gaining weight, right? So today we're going to talk about what is called the set point weight theory. We'll go over what it is, why you should find it and how to find it. I'm going to tell you how you can find the weight that you feel amazing at mentally and physically with no dieting, no restricting, and really no micromanaging at all. It's possible. Okay, so I'm going to call you out right now because I know throughout this video, you're going to be thinking that's great, Colleen, but not going to work for me. And again, my past self used to think those exact same things but it does work and it will work for you. I can say this not only because it's worked for me, but it's also worked for thousands of women all across the world who've adapted the no food rules framework and approach to nutrition. This is the same framework that I teach inside my membership, the society and girlfriends in there are cooking, they're getting it. Living with no food rules works. Have faith. All right, guys, if you are super excited about this video and finally addressing this weight topic, give it a like and let's get into it. Okay. So first, what the heck is the set point weight theory? You may have been seeing this phrase splattered across Instagram as this whole intuitive eating movement has gained momentum because they kind of do work hand in hand. So when it comes to the set point weight theory, essentially what it is, is it's the weight that your body wants to be at. It's the weight that you can maintain effortlessly within a range because obvi weight fluctuations are normal. I mean, they can change if you don't poop your set point weight. So this idea that the weight that your body wants to be at is influenced by a lot of things like genetics, metabolism, also those external factors like movement and your eating choices. But so many of us are not at our set point weight, not at the weights that we feel great at because of diet culture. And I'll get into how you can find out, are you maybe above, below, or at your set point weight? We'll get into that in a minute. Basically diet culture is constantly telling us that we need to try to change our weight. And really that backfires. All of these diets that we go on, all of these food rules that we try to implement is only keeping us further away from the weight that we feel good at. So when we go on diets, the theory here says that we go on a diet and we're in essentially the state of semi starvation, right? Because a lot of those fad diets out there are more on the extreme end of the scale. So our body thinks, Oh my gosh, food is scarce. Food is not available. So I better, you know, keep a little bit more energy around. So the next time the scarcity happens, I'll be ready with some extra. And the theory says that this causes our set point weight to increase. That's why yo-yo dieters tend to see their weight just creep up and up with every cycle of dieting, with every cycle of dieting, food rules, restrictions. It's this continual process and only 10% of those who lose weight, keep it off for over a year. That's crazy. But that's because when we are dieting or following these strict food rules, our body sees that as semi starvation and it wants to protect itself. It's not you that's failing the diet. It's your body literally trying to fight for you. Dieting is a predictor of weight gain as backwards as that sounds. It's true. We resist our set point weight because we want to look like the fitness models in the magazine, or we are just honestly, basically conditioned to always be on a mission to lose weight, which weight loss is not a determinant of our health. Thinner does not always equal healthier. Thinner does not always equal better. Essentially we're increasing our set point weights because we are trying to achieve these unrealistic standards. We don't even realize the damage we're doing to ourselves, both mentally and physically. If you're really caught up on the whole weight and health connection or lack thereof, sometimes I highly, highly recommend the book health at every size. You can also listen to it on audible. I talked about it in my video where I give you my top five book recommendations for learning how to actually eat intuitively, but health at every size really digs into weight and health. And what is the actual connection there? 
it's packed with science, it's packed with research, and I highly, highly recommend looking into that book to really help you kind of wrap your head around that concept. Because it's so different from what diet culture tells us, it can be hard to digest. No pun intended, but that was good. I firmly, firmly believe that when you give up dieting, you give up food rules, you are going to find the weight that you feel best at. Now, again, that could be weight gain, weight maintenance, or weight loss. None of those is bad, but I can tell you that at that set point weight, you're going to feel your best because that is where you achieve that balance, that magical balance that we're all looking for between that mental, that physical, that is your set point weight. Your body is able to naturally regulate its energy intake to keep you feeling amazing, both mentally and physically. Your body will naturally tell you when enough brownies are enough brownies, when it needs a dose of veggies. It only does that though when it's not constantly looking out for that next semi-starvation that's gonna happen, i.e. dieting. I also wanna note too that I get a lot of questions on people saying, I haven't had much of an appetite the past couple days. I'm worried it's gonna increase my set point weight. That is not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about actual dieting and food rules and restrictions for those longer periods of time. One day, I mean, we get stomach bugs, right? We get just periods where we don't have much of an appetite. That's not what I'm talking about here to increase your set point weight. It's those diets, it's those food rules that are gonna do it. Okay, so in essence, that's what the set point weight theory says. I'll link to a couple resources below if you want to dive more into kind of the research behind it. But now I want to get into a couple questions of how do I know if I'm above or maybe below my set point weight? And again, I've seen girls in my membership do all three, gain weight, lose weight, and maintain weight. None of them is bad and they all feel better. Okay, here are a couple questions that I want you to answer. Ready? They're all yes or no. Do you have difficulty recognizing your hunger and fullness? finding yourself getting way too hangry and then getting way too stuffed. Do you consistently eat past fullness feeling just a oh, food coma? Do you feel like sometimes you are a little out of control with eating and just cannot get yourself to stop? Do you skip meals throughout the day and maybe only have one large meal in the evening or try to save calories when a big event or a big meal is coming? Do you find that you eat when you're stressed or you're anxious or you're bored? You use food kind of as a coping mechanism. Do you have all or nothing thinking? So it's either I'm doing so good on my diet or I'm so bad. Do you find yourself eating real fast and not even really tasting it? Okay, so if you answered yes to any of those questions, that might be an indicator that maybe you are above your set point weight. Now, that does not mean you are above your set point weight, but that might be true. Now let's answer another set of questions. Do you feel like you're constantly preoccupied with food and planning your next meal or planning your next snack? Do you find yourself constantly trying to suppress your hunger because it's not time to eat? Do you find yourself in a constant state of hanger and being really, really on edge? Do you wake up in the morning super, super hungry? Do you have a low sex drive? Have you lost your period or has it gotten really light or irregular? Do you find yourself being obsessed with food, watching videos, seeing it on TV, searching on Pinterest? If you answered yes to any of those questions, that might indicate that maybe you're below your set point weight, maybe you're restricting. And again, those are not definitive answers. I actually pulled some of those ideas from Linda Bacon who wrote that Health at Every Size book and really, really talks about that set point weight theory. Okay, so by now you know what a set point weight is. You might have an idea if you are above or below your set point weight. So now let's talk about how can I actually find it? So the first thing you gotta do is give up any of those weight controlling tools. So that means counting calories. That means my fitness pal or counting points or going by your fitness tracker and only eating based on that calorie burn getting rid of the scale. Uh, uh Don't get rid of it. Smash it. Because those are going to keep you from finding that set point weight. Because all of those things, think about it, they have an influence on what you eat, what you put into your body. It's taking away from actually listening to it, which is going to find our set point weight. Because like we said, diet culture is just increasing our set point weights even further, making us unhappy. What's good about that? You can also use the hunger scale. So you can snag a copy of the hunger scale that I use and that I use with the girlfriends in my membership in my free ebook, which I'll link to below. But basically this really helps with understanding the hunger and fullness and 
regulating your body's energy needs naturally, not based on an app, not based on how many calories you've burned that day, because those things aren't even really accurate in the first place. There's so many things they don't take into account. You can practice mindful eating techniques. Now I have a blog post all on my top 10 mindful eating exercises and I'll link to that below too. But basically for this, I would say pick one of them and start implementing it at least one time each day. I think a lot of reason too why we're not at our set point weight is because there's a lot of guilt or shame around food that causes us to not eat mindfully. And that causes us to not listen to our bodies because how can we when we're just shoveling food into our mouths? So those mindful eating exercises can be super helpful. Another thing you can do is assess your food intake. Now, I don't mean saying, okay, am I good or bad? I mean, literally thinking back to a day or two and asking yourself, did I feel nourished? Did I feel good about the choices that I made? What choices did I feel great about and what choices maybe didn't I feel great about? And why didn't I feel great about those choices? If you're finding that by the evening you are so hungry and you're just having a giant feast and you go through a whole box of Girl Scout cookies, maybe that doesn't feel so good. So you add more to your lunch or you give yourself a breakfast in the morning to prevent yourself from getting super hungry later in the evening. That's what I mean about assessing. Or maybe you had a smoothie in the morning. You're like, I felt like I could take on the day. Find out how you can make more of those. Maybe you make like little smoothie bags or something. Just assess and do this without judgment, just simply observing. Do the same thing with your exercise routine. Assess it. What makes you feel good? What exercises do you enjoy and what exercises don't you? Are you over exercising? Are you finding that you go to exercise and you're like, this is the last freaking thing I want to do. Maybe you need rest. So pick one of those things and just implement it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to do them all at once. Actually, I really recommend you don't do them all at once because that's that all or nothing thinking coming back into play. Pick one thing, then build on it, and that is going to help you find your set point weight. It doesn't have to be anything drastic, but I really, really think a key thing is to get rid of those weight controlling tools. And I know that is so, so scary. I used my fitness pal for six years and logged all of my calories. I had a 900 day streak, so crazy to think about. I have a whole video where I go into that and I'll link to that there so you can watch it, but I know how scary it is. It's hard, but Doing the hard things is what makes everything worth it. Because like I said, you can get to a place where you don't have to micromanage anything, anything. And your weight maintains stable within a range. You don't have to think about it. You can have a freaking cupcake and not have to worry about gaining a million pounds because you trust your body and your body trusts you. Let me know what you guys think of the set point weight theory in the comments and which of these different techniques that you're going to put into play. Because like I said, all you have to do is pick one. It can be as simple as picking one of those mindful eating exercises. It could be as simple as downloading the hunger scale. You got this. And bottom line, like I said, you are going to feel amazing at your set point weight mentally and physically. It's going to give you the balance that we're all striving for. You will still be able to enjoy life, feel great in your body, amazing. And if you're watching this video in real time when it's being posted, I have a super exciting challenge coming for you guys, a free challenge that's going to help you find your set point weight. So get excited. Be sure to head over to Instagram and follow me at no.food.rules to be kept posted on that. If you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe to the channel. It really does help me in making more videos like this. And let me know in the comments what you guys want to hear more of. I will see you next Sunday when a new video is uploaded at 5 p.m. Eastern time. See you later.